What do you think? You like it? So if we come over to Threadbare Creations website, in the upper right hand corner is the search function. We just type in Bonita Bunny. And the pattern comes right up here. Select read more. And here you'll be able to download the pattern and it does have a few different sizes available, a six, eight, and 10 inch square. For this video, I did choose to make the eight inch square. So to download the pattern, you would just scroll all the way down and you would click here and save it to your computer. So the first thing we want to do is print out our pattern. Today I'm using Simple Foundations translucent vellum paper, but you can also use regular printer paper as well. I prefer the vellum paper because as you can see, it's quite see-through, so you'll be able to see um, your fabric through the back as you're placing it. So you need to print out the Bonita Bunny pattern. So after you have your pattern printed, um, what I would recommend doing if you're using this vellum paper, um, so there are supposed to be um, quarter inch seam allowances provided along the outside, but because this is such thin paper, it didn't print too well on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I am going to draw quarter inch lines all the way around the outside. And then I'm going to use my scissors and cut it out and it should look like this when it's done having the quarter inch seam allowance around the outside because if you don't remember that you're not going to have a seam allowance to be able to piece these two pieces together like that and then you might have um, some holes or gaps in your pattern so when I'm cutting it out I'm going well outside of that quarter inch line because I want to make sure that we have enough room um, when we go to trim this piece up. Just like that. So because this is a paper piecing tutorial, um, this is a really great pattern to be able to use those scrap fabrics. So today I will be using this beautiful white and it has like some tiny little flowers inside of it and then um i don't know which line that is i ended up getting it on the sale bin at the fabric store um but this is bonnie and camille some um leftover fabrics that i had so for the rabbit itself we will be using this white um, for the ears and the nose, we'll be using this peachy coral color. And then for the entire outside of the bunny, um, the background fabric, we will be using this. Um, with the Bonita Bunny, uh, Rose put a little um, cute little bow up in the ear. Um, you could also use it as a bow tie as mentioned in her pattern. So I am going to attempt to make a little bow out of this green scap fabric because it's just so cute. Some of the other materials that you will need will be an iron. Um, today I am going to be using this Clover Mini Applique Iron. Um, it works really great for pressing these kinds of pieces. And then I also have a hard edge tool. Um, this one is Deb Spiffy hard edge tool, but you can use any piece of um, cardstock because what we're going to start by doing is um, putting fold lines on these, putting creases on these fold lines because that will help guide us as we are assembling our pattern. 
So for the first part of our pattern, we want to prepare our pieces. So we're going to take our hard edge tool and we're going to line it up on these lines. We're going to fold back our pattern and just give it a little press. Open it back up. We're going to do this for each of the lines. Being careful not to crease all the way into this next piece because this will actually be our sewing line so we don't want to get um, a big crease through here. Don't worry about creasing all the way around the outside. Um, just work on the inside pieces. So the next step that I like to do is actually going to save us a little bit of time and headache in the long run. And that is um, doing some rough cuts for these each of these pieces. Um, so that way we're not dealing with a big piece of fabric, sewing it to this and then trying to figure out um, where to cut it off. So as you can see um, for the top of Bonita, we have one, two, three pieces of our background fabric. We have two pieces for the ears and then four pieces for our white. So let's go ahead and start with our ears. Because these are some scrap fabric pieces, let's go ahead and measure these out. Now the thing to keep in mind is the, the seam allowance. Your fabric should go at least one quarter inch to the left and to the right of the sew lines as well as coming below and above this quarter inch mark. What I can do is I can place my piece of fabric and kind of play around with it on here and flip it over and see is this piece going to work. So this is the core, the um, first ear piece that I'm going to do. I can see here that this is my quarter inch line. The piece of pink fabric goes below, well below that, as well as covering the entire triangle and then coming right above it. So I think that this piece is just going to work for this as long as I can get this sewn on exactly. And we will measure the same for the other side. Might be helpful to do it on the right side up just so you can see, um, you know, if it's going to work through this vellum paper. If you are using regular um, paper, just keep in mind that you may need to cut your pieces a little bit bigger just to um, make sure that everything is going to line up. And it looks like this one will also. So the next piece that I want to be able to line up is these background pieces. So this one is obviously not going to work for the middle, but it looks like it will work well for the two um, corner pieces. So, with that in mind, keeping in mind these seams here, it looks like if I just cut this piece in half, just kind of roughly here, that this piece will work well here. And then we have another piece for this side. And then we will open up this one and we will roughly cut something big enough for this outside triangle. So I'm just going to come along here, do kind of one of these things, 
and then um just because i i don't like too much fabric too much of the extra fabric for these paper pieces um what i am going to do is i am going to cut this a little bit more on the diagonal just so we don't have so much extra fabric but i'm leaving myself plenty of room for the seam allowances um on either side and well above and below so i'm going to continue doing this for the rest of my pieces and we'll come back when that's done so after you're done cutting out all of your pieces what i've done here is i've laid them out in the order that we are going to piece them so a1 a2 a3 and so on so that way it just makes it really clear and really easy as you're going along and super efficient to piece this we're actually going to be putting all of our fabric on the back side and a way to remember this whether you lay your um right side down or right side up is to remember wrong side to wrong side so this would be considered your right side because we can see all of the letters um, properly but this is going to be the wrong side so our first pieces that we're going to do is a1 to a2 so these are our first two pieces a1 and a2 so we're going to flip our piece over and we can see this is going to be our line. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the wrong side of A2. And we want to put this about a quarter inch or a little bit more over this line. Because this is going to be our sewing line and we want to give ourselves a seam allowance. And we want to do right sides together for our fabric we can just line these up together because when we stitch along here and we open it up we're going to have our a1 and our a2 so the next step after we've got it pinned is i'm going to take to the machine and i'm going to sew in between a1 and a2 down this line and I am going to be using a 1.5 stitch length. So we're here at the machine and I am going to adjust my stitch length to 1.5. And when I sew, I am going to sew a little bit beyond this quarter inch line just to make sure that um, all of my seams will stay together when I cut through it. And I'm going to stitch all the way through. So now that we've sewn our piece, you, we are going to remove the pin and we are going to fold this back. So this is a piece that we've just sewn. We're going to turn it. I am right handed so I am going to turn it this way and we want to cut off any of the extra fabric. So we're going to measure to a quarter inch. I am using um, the Missouri Star Quilt Ruler, the 6 by or 5 by 15, sorry. And we're just going to cut this off here. Remember to always close your rotary blade as you put it back down. We'll open this up here. We'll flip it over. You can see we have our first two pieces put together. So I like to give this a little bit of a finger press and then so we'll take it over to the iron. This is a really great iron because it is nice and small so you can get right into those seams and make sure that everything is flat and the way that you want it to be. So what we are going to do is line up the next piece. So we've sewn A1 to A2. 
So next is A3. And you can see that the A2 piece that we have is um, much larger than the A3 piece. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and just kind of cut off a little bit of the extra here. And we'll put this aside and we can use it for another project. So here is our A3. So we're going to put right sides together and you always want the straight sides touching. And we're going to flip it over and we are going to fold over our line between the A2 and the A3. And what you can see here is that the A3 piece, this is our quarter inch seam allowance, it does not cover um, the fabric piece. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move our piece over underneath until it lines up. It's almost there, but not quite. So once we have it lined up like this, then we can um, look at the other sides. So this side looks good, this side not so much, and this side looks good. So we're actually going to have to angle this a little bit like this to make sure that everything lines up. So you'll just have to play with this. Okay, so I think I've got it all lined up on all of the sides. So we will carefully fold this back and then we will put a, another pin in here. So we are going to do the same thing that we did at the last step and stitch along this next line here. Okay, so we are back and this has been pressed open. So we have our A1, A2, and A3. So the next step that we are going to do after it has been ironed um, is to fold it back, cut off this quarter inch, and open it up again. Now you're welcome to re-iron it at this point or you can cut it and then iron it. It's really um, whatever your preference is. So we're going to keep adding all of our next pieces. This is the A4 piece. So as I line this up and I pull over on our next sewing line, I need to adjust this bottom piece so that way when we are sewing this and we open it up, everything will be in line. So our A4, which is our white piece, looks like it's about right. So I'll take this to the machine and sew this and I will continue going around for the rest of the pieces. So I just wanted to show you guys something um, I had been going a little bit outside of this quarter inch line and now that I've gotten to this one where it's time to fold it back and stitch my quarter of an inch or cut off that quarter inch seam you can see there's this little bit of bunchiness here. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take out a few of these stitches so that way it can release that fabric so that way I can lay this down and get a really good cut here. Alrighty, so now that we've got all of the pieces stitched on, this is what the front looks like and what it looks like from the back. So we're going to, or sorry, this is technically the front because um, of the letters. So now that we're on the front side, 
we're going to take our ruler we're going to line it up on that quarter inch seam line and we are going to take off all the excess fabric I'm going to do this to each of the four sides That one didn't cut through all the way. Give that another go. And the last side here. And there we have it. The top part of our Bonita Bunny. And we are not going to take out the paper yet until after we get the second part done. So here we are on the second half of Bonita Bunny and I've got the fabric pinned right sides together, wrong sides to wrong side of the pattern. And our first line is the B1 to B2. So I'm going to stitch from here over. So I am actually going to start my needle here at this intersection and go from that way. Again, I have the 1.5 stitch length. And I'm just going to bring my needle down until I can, and move it over until I can get it exactly in the right spot. have it. So then when we get back to the cutting station, I will fold this down and trim the rest of that. So I've just stitched across the next intersection between the B2 and the B3, starting here and ending here. So we are going to remove our pin, fold it back along the stitch line, and trim. This is a little bit of a trickier piece just because it's in the middle and you need to be very precise with your stitching. Just like that. Then we will fold it back, finger press it, and take it to the iron. This next part with the B3 and B4, I'm going to fold it down and I'm going to move my fabric so that way it's all the way under the B4. It's a little close on this upper corner. I'm going to move it down a little bit more. be all set there.
So I'll take it back to the machine, stitch along here. So we have everything sewn on that piece. So we get to do that super satisfying thing and cut off all of the extra. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's flip it over see the final result oh ho, 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 adorable and look how cute that is so in the directions for this bunny so we've ha we have our um paper on the back and we're going to connect them so we're going to put them right sides together. Make sure you have it going the right direction because you don't want to stitch it and then open it up and it's the wrong way. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to rip back this top part of the fabric here. Um, rip back the top part of the paper. So that way I'm only stitching, um, I'm going to stitch in the ditch right along here so that way I don't have to go through two layers of paper and all of the layers of fabric so I'm just gonna rip this back a little bit here careful not to um you know like rip over um the seam of your fabric like that and then I will fold this back along this line and you can pull out that tool that we used earlier kind of fold it down along the way alrighty so I've got the paper pulled back on each of these sides here and what we're going to do next is we are going to pin them right sides together and we want to make sure that these seams are lining up with each other so we'll kind of Try to nest them together there. And then the seam on the other side. And I will take this to the machine and stitch across right next to the paper. So we've got them sewn together, we've got our seams pressed open, and now is the most satisfying part. We get to take off the paper. You can do this very easily just by starting in one corner and kind of pull the seam apart gently if you need to get in here to get another um, piece.
just like that. Alrighty, so all the paper has been removed. The middle seam has been pressed open. I ironed this with the big iron. Let's take a look at it. Super cute. So I have some batting. Um, these were some leftover batting strips. So I just zigzagged them together to make one new piece of batting. I try to reuse um, as much as I can and have as little waste as possible. Unfortunately, with the paper piecing, yes, you do get to use um, your scrap fabrics, but there is still you know quite a bit of waste from the trimmings so um i look forward to finding a creative use for those later on um so this is going to be the background super fun just reminds me of spring and i have cut the binding to two inches um and i will sew these together and bind it so i am going to hand quilt this at the machine and um, I will probably do something similar to the original design that Rose did which is just the simple um, serpentine stitch all the way down. So now that the quilting is complete, you can see it here. Um, it looks really, really quilted um, in the direct sunlight, but when you kind of hold it up like this, um, it's just kind of more of like a like a subtlety. So um, that is it for this tutorial. We'll just end up squaring this up and. Um, bind it with your usual methods and I'll show you the final result. And here is the final results of the Bonita Bunny. Look how cute this is. I just sewed on each of the eyes, made this little bow out of some scrap fabric, put the binding on. I did hand stitch the back after I machine applied the front, made a couple little pockets so that way I can put a hanger in between and I can go hang it over by the bunnies. Hi everybody, thank you for watching how I made this adorable, cute, bonito bunny. If you'd like to see more videos like this, bunny related, please give this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing so that way you can be notified when new content comes out. Thanks again. Say bye. Thanks for watching.